up composers it's Josh and today I want to go over a uh, very useful skill called transcribing which is listening to uh, the music and putting it down on paper or uh, in modern day and age on computer uh, when you do this you develop a uh, good sense of music theory uh, due to the analyzing part and then also it's re very useful to train your ears so that um, you can really pick up on those small details. Now if you're new to this, it can be kind of daunting and intimidating. I've had uh, one or two guys reach out to me about that and say, wow, I, I don't know if I can transcribe. Well, I want to make it easy and, and simple. Um, the approach here is to make sure that you guys uh, are set up for success and I'll go over some techniques as well. I'm going to start with an example from a 1950s tune called Rock and Robin that I transcribed. It's by Bobby Day. And here we go. All right, guys. So we're going to jump right into the Rock and Robin track. Um, I'm using this as an example only because I actually transcribed it all the way through as a gig. But uh, you guys can uh, use this and apply it to any f of your favorite tracks. Uh, first thing is drop your audio into the DAW. I use Cubase and right here um, this is a good way to uh, kind of go back and forth on parts. Um, I, I've set a marker here as well so that markers are good uh, if you want to uh, go and jump to a, another section that you want to listen to. Much easier than scrolling from your Windows Media Player and then going back and forth, back and forth. All right, so this is much more efficient. The next step is um, I would recommend uh, do uh, dropping or copying and pasting another track. So I duplicated this one and I actually did a time stretch. And uh, here's the difference. He rocks in the treetop all the day long, hopping and a bopping and a singing. All right, so we all know that song. Now here is the other um, version of that that's time stretched. He rocks in the treetop all the day long, hopping and a bop. All right. And you can imagine uh, how that would make your transcribing life easier by slowing down things, especially for rhythms. Um, there are some art digital artifacts that are introduced when you slow it down. So be careful with that. Um, with that being said, the next step is to figure out the form. So I have it down here. Here's a another version of that. So right here, um, you can see that I have the intro for eight bars, verse for one, uh, verse one for eight bars, chorus for eight bars, etc. Um, so nothing too exciting, right? All eight bars up until the piccolo solo part, and now another eight bars of each section, totaling up to 108 bars. So once you figure out the form. The next step is to figure out the instrumentation. So I listened to it enough times to figure out all the parts and good, get a good sense of uh, what's being played. So you have bass, guitar, piccolo, drum set, percussion. And then for the vocal side, you have the tenor soloist, um, women, and men background vocals. Um, once you get the instrumentation down, another thing to start is uh, to figure out the key. Um, this apparently is in the key of G. Uh, and then when you start out, figure out the most obvious parts. For me, I'm a drummer, so I, I, sent, I uh, gravitate towards the drum parts. And it's a very simple drum part, very um, uh, just a typical swing hi-hat part. And then, um, you know, you add these little things. So let's let's just play that so you can hear all right so you get the idea now I'm using Sibelius uh, there's tons of uh, new notation software out there Finale is another old one uh, Dorico is great I hear uh, there's MuseScore um, and I'm not sure what whatever else is out there nowadays, but they're all pretty good and effective as long as that you can copy and paste. <laughs> I don't care, right? Copy and paste is so useful nowadays. All right, so um, that's the 
essentially what you would do. Use your ears, start to gravitate towards instruments that you like uh, or instruments that, um, that you can relate to, and then from there build upon that. And, and eventually you'll get a full-on score and deliver. Um, now, if it's not a job, maybe it's for your own study purposes. It doesn't have to look so neat, um, but you still want to get the notes as accurate as possible. And then from there, you want to be able to uh, analyze the chords. So for instance, right here I have my electric guitar. Um, all the chords are uh, written out over the notes because then it, I can use that for my music theory and, and, and make educated guesses on certain things like let's say a piccolo solo right so I have this part and 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 that all helps in figuring out the notes and making educated guesses what I will do now is go over some techniques and tips so let's go back here to Cubase um, one thing that is very useful is to uh, use high pass and low pass filters to um, essentially isolate a sound. Now, uh, the one of the harder sounds to get right is usually the bass, or sometimes it's, it's uh, the drums um, or the kick part. So what I struggled on was this part here. All right. Uh, there's a lot going on, and, and the recording is, is a little muddy uh, because of in that time frame it was in the 50s, and everything was all done mono, uh, sounds like. But um, what I wanted to do is really isolate the bass guitar. So what I ended up doing was I put a, a, a low-pass filter, and I filtered out everything maybe uh, over that was 100 hertz. Like that. And let's uh, take a listen again. All right, I'm going to do that one more time, but boost the volume as well. All right, and you can already hear um, a clarity in just the low frequencies. Um, so that is something that's very useful. You can do that alternatively with, let's say, uh, part that is harder to hear or, or maybe you want to hear like the piccolo solo part so let, let's do a, um, a and b of the part here so here's the piccolo solo part Okay, I'm going to go back and I'm going to turn the filter on. I'm actually using both filters, high pass and low pass, to isolate that spot. And you can actually see visually where the instrument is being hit. Right okay. There's some uh, other plugins here. So going back to our gadgets and gizmos. Uh, there is a really cool plugin called MV2, which is essentially a, um, a compressor, but it brings up the low level details so that it everything pops, even the low sounds, and it squashes everything down as such where then um, it's much easier to hear uh, those pesky, plucky, pizzicato sounds or whatever else it is. All right, guys. That's it for today, so I hope that opens some doors for you. Um, transcribing is one of the uh, more tedious type of tasks to do, but once you do it, it's something that is uh, very invaluable. So I hope that you guys can transcribe some of your favorite pieces and go from there. All right, so this is Josh signing off. I'll see you next time.